There's a brand new, totally free, open source LLM that's built for coders, and I've been waiting for this one, Quen3 Coder. But it's 480 billion parameters, and you're gonna need a big chonker to run this 510 gigabyte model. Hold on, hold on, before you misunderstand, I mean you're gonna need a lot of VRAM to be able to run it. Either unifying memory on Apple Silicon, or a bunch of discrete GPUs all together, AKA a data center. But they were nice enough to also release Quen3 Coder 30 billion flash. And this is the one that we'll be able to run at home. But for those with even the top of the line consumer GPU, the RTX 5090, there's a slight issue. The 5090 has 32 gigabytes of VRAM. 32, and this model in Q8 is 32.48, just barely, barely not fitting in there. Oh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Q8 is the quantization level. Quantization is how much the model is shrunk down in order to fit in video cards like this. So this one is not gonna fit, by half a gigabyte. We're gonna test that out right now. And Q4, it means it's shrunk down even more, is 18.63 gigabytes, which is just outside the range of the 16 gigabytes that the 5060s and the 5070s have and the 5080s. So you might need to drop down to the previous generation 4090, which has 24 gigs of VRAM in order to be able to run the four bit quantized version. But Believe it or not, this little box right here has 64 gigs of unified memory and it can run both of those quantization levels. Three of these will fit into my 5090. And of course, the M3 Ultra will be able to do that as well. Here's Quen 2.5, 14 billion, which is the previous version, which is 14.62 gigabytes. And we're gonna run this on the 5060 that I have here. Offloading all the layers, let's go. For some reason, this is still not fitting quite nicely and we're seeing a lot of CPU action happening here. 13 gigabytes out of the 16 available are being used on that GPU and we're only at 43% utilization, which is not really great. We're getting 11 tokens per second there. However, the new model, Quen3, has better utilization. More than two times the number of parameters, it's not that much bigger and check this out, it's faster even though we're not using the GPU to its fullest and we're not fully loading that model onto the 5060 because it only has 16 gigabytes, we're still using the CPU, but look at this, we're getting 30 tokens per second there. That means this model is way more efficient. You're gonna be able to run more parameters faster across all the hardware, even if you have to use some of the CPU. You wanna have your model fully in the GPU so it's the fastest. You don't want any CPU spillover because then it's gonna slow things down. And we're about to see that. So now I'm gonna switch over to the 5090, which has 32 gigs of VRAM, and I'm gonna load up the Q8 version of this model. And that's just a little bit too big to fit in 32 gigs. Why couldn't they make it just a little bit smaller, you know, instead of a little bit bigger so that it fits completely in 32 gigs. It'll be nice and neat, but no. It's still going pretty decently fast. 24% utilization. We're loading only 26 out of 32 gigabytes of VRAM. The rest is being offloaded to the CPU, unfortunately, giving us 31 tokens per second. So these days I'm constantly flipping between models. GPT-40 for notes and email, Claude for code refactors, Flux for image generation, Kling for video, four tabs, four bills, and counting. Enter chat LLM teams. There's one dashboard that houses every top LLM and route LLM picks the right one for you for a given task. O4 Mini High for fast answers, Claude Sonnet 3.7 for coding, Gemini 2.5 Pro for big context, and even adds GPT 4.1 before ChatGPT has it. Chat with PDFs and PowerPoints, then generate decks and docs and do deep research all in the same chat. Need human sounding copy? The humanized toggle rewrites text to beat AI detectors. Spin up agents and run code with AI engineer. I built my first bot in just minutes, track artifacts, create GitHub pull requests, and debug from the same interface. Need visuals? No problem. Use Flux or Ideogram and Recraft for images, Kling, Luma, and Runway for video all built in. And the kicker is just $10 a month, less than one premium model. Head over to chatllm.abacus.ai or click the link in the description and level up with Chat LLM Teams. What about this little guy? This is the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and it's got 64 gigs of unified memory. Most of that can be used by the GPU. All right, here on top, I've got the Mac Mini. On the bottom, I've got the Windows machine. Let's load up that 4-bit model. By the way, this is the MLX quantization because MLX is a little bit more performant on Apple Silicon. It's designed for it. 
Boom, and there it goes. That is going pretty fast. Does that look faster than the other ones? I don't know, let's find out. I'm gonna stop at 75 tokens per second, which is faster than the 5060 for sure, but it's also the four bit quant that's faster than the eight bit quant running on the RTX 5090. I know it's a little confusing. I've got charts coming up, don't worry. Here's the eight bit version. Let's try that on the Mac mini. So this one of course should be a little bit slower and it is. 52 tokens per second. 52 tokens per second is a lot faster than 31 tokens per second. So if you're dealing with an 8-bit quant of this model, this runs way faster on an Apple Silicon Mac Mini than it does on the RTX 5090 because of that CPU spillover when you're running it on the 5090. That's crazy. Of course, I've got the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra. Both of those are gonna be even faster than that. But what about Windows and Linux people? What can they do to improve their lives here since they were hurt so badly by these model sizes? Well, they can always get two. So let's say you have like a, a 5080 or a 5060 or a 5070, and those have 16 gigabytes each. You can add another GPU and extend that. But in order to be able to run the full 30 billion parameter model at 8-bit, you're gonna need that 5090 with 32 gigs and another card. So I've got one of the lower ones here. I've got a 5060 Ti with 16 gigs. Together they have 48. Now, first of all, you're gonna need to get a motherboard that can support two GPUs, and then you're gonna need to run software that can support that. LM Studio is able to do that, and I can control what goes where through the hardware tab. I can turn on and off each one of these GPUs. I can have them both on. Now remember that 31 tokens per second, that's the number to beat, and I'll select that eight bit quantization. Eight bits is gonna supposedly give us better results than four bits. However, the quality testing is something to be done in a separate video. This video is just for speed testing only. And let's go. Okay, it's looking pretty decent. I like the speed. Both the GPUs are working. It's getting warmer. Let's take a look at what speed we're getting here. We're getting 50. So we're getting closer to what that Mac Mini can do, but we're still under it in tokens per second, even using both of these GPUs. There is one more setting we could change. There is this split evenly setting. And what that does is, let me show you. Here's the two GPUs right there. It's trying to balance out the amount of VRAM it's using from each GPU. It's using 21 out of 32 gigabytes from the 5090, 32% utilization. And it's using 10 out of 16 gigabytes on the 5060 with 32% utilization as well. So what's happening there is it's splitting the model, but we know that the 5090 has a lot more memory bandwidth than the 5060. So what we really want to do is load up that 5090 to the max before we spill over to the 5060. And you can do that in LM Studio. And we've got both the GPUs selected, but instead of split evenly, we want to do priority order, one and two. And we want to make sure that the 5090 is listed first. You can move these around but the 5090 should be first because it has more bandwidth and it has more memory, so let's use that to the max. Write out Java function to find prime numbers up to N. Boom, there we go. But is this fast enough? Let's stop that. 49 tokens per second. That's not great. For some reason, even though there's enough RAM here, enough VRAM, since we have to do a little bit of copying back and forth, that's taking a hit on the performance. Now that's the 8-bit version. Let's take a look at the 4-bit version. This should be a lot faster. And yeah, wow, look at that difference. We're seeing a lot of utilization on that 5090, almost no utilization on the 5060. Everything is pretty much running and fitting inside that 5090, so there's no need to share the GPUs at all. So what we're seeing here is really from the 5090. 157 tokens per second on this one. That is a huge difference. Now, a lot of you are interested in not just a little short prompt, so I had to automate this whole process because it was gonna take forever. It already took forever because some of these scripts that I wrote, I had to run overnight. I ran them over and over and over again, and I wanted to shove a bunch of different prompts. So here are some examples. Extra long programming code heavy prompt, which is 17,000 tokens. This would be an example of a really large context window. And I had to enlarge the context window of this model to 50,000. This model supports a huge context window. But of course, when you do that, you're increasing the memory footprint that's required as well. And you're gonna see a little bit
bit of a slowdown from what you've seen in the UI when I just demonstrated. This one is 17,000. Here is one using repo prompt, which is a tool I've showed before on the channel. Really nice tool, check it out. This allows you to basically create a mapping of your entire project or parts of the project and include that as part of the context. So this one is 44,000 tokens. And then we got some smaller token size prompts like long architecture enterprise prompt, non-programming analysis prompt. These are long prompts. These are over a thousand tokens each. And then I did some medium prompts, which are prompts that you would probably enter yourself in the range of a hundred tokens or so. And then we got some really short prompts like design a microservices architecture, short debug prompt, fix and debug this little function right here. Simple greeting, hi. By the way, I have to apologize. I've been using a lot of hi in my previous videos. And after doing this analysis, it's not a good prompt at all. And I'll show you why. Sorry to all those folks that had to deal with me saying hi. I won't do it again. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. Anyway, I shoved all these prompts one at a time, five times each. Here's what one of the results looks like. The long architecture prompt is on the left. The shortest ones are on the right. This little line right here, that's the variability. You want that to be as small as possible. So even after running that high prompt, the short, simple greeting prompt five times, no matter how many times I ran it actually on all the different platforms, different models, I get a really huge variability. So it's not a very good one. These are used not through the UI, but through its REST endpoint. LM Studio exposes a REST endpoint where you can query it using an open AI style API, which is most likely how you'd be using it if you were to use this in a code editor, for example, or with something like Quen Code, which is a terminal based agent based application. So this is what 8 bit looks like using this setup with the RTX 5090 and 5060. There is a little bit of a difference between the long prompts and the medium prompts. Notice that the very short prompts have really poor performance speed wise. The fastest one was this short programming prompt and the system completely failed when it came to the 17,000 token prompt and the 44,000 token prompt. Now let's take a look at this. This is the four bit version here. We're running pretty much on the 5090, even though both cards were involved in this and we're getting really good speeds of 163 tokens per second on all these. We're doing really well. Here's the M4 Pro this little Mac mini here. And we're doing pretty well here, over 80 tokens per second on some of these. And here are the extra long prompts. These are the prompts that the RTX cards weren't even able to process, but the little box could, not very fast, 10 tokens per second there. That's the 44,000 token prompt. It still did it, which is pretty cool. And then 25 tokens per second for the 17,000 token prompt. M4 Max, even faster. 25 tokens per second for the 44,000 token prompt and up to 110 tokens per second for the medium programming prompt. But you know what surprised me the most? The M3 Ultra <laughs> didn't do as well as the M4 Max. Here's the four bit result with all of them combined. Of course, with four bits, the RTX 5090 just destroys it. So if you're okay with that quant, that's the fastest result you're gonna get. M4 Pro, M4 Max, and M3 Ultra are all down here. And let's take the fastest result, which is that M4 Max. And compared to the M3 Ultra, we're quite a bit off here. The M3 Ultra is consistently slower for this particular model than the M4 Max, which is kind of odd. Except for these really long prompts, the M3 Ultra is a little bit faster there, which is kind of interesting. But the M4 Pro and the M4 Max relation is kind of what I would expect. Now, if we take a look at the 8-bit version of this, whoa, still kind of the same with the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra. The M3 Ultra actually does better with 8-bit and the M4 Pro seems to do a little bit worse. But what's really worse is that RTX based machine, the Nvidia machines. First of all, it didn't run the extra long prompts at all. And second, it took a huge hit from having to share that memory and go through system memory while it was copying back and forth and combining the results from the two cards. This definitely probably would have been better on that RTX Pro 6000. That is a very expensive card. And if you wanna know more about that card, check out this video over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.